All right, been two days follow up to the purse lane video. All that purse lane I processed the other day, which has been several meals worth easily. I just chopped it off the end of this parent plant here. So all I did was snap off all those twigs. So you can see this is a lot of food here. This little patch of purse lane. Now, I'm not sure if that's a monarch butterfly caterpillar right there. On a carrot? I'm gonna go look that up before I kill it and see what kind of moth or caterpillar that is. Or moth or butterfly, I mean. So this is a um, cold frame here. That was just a, uh, came up naturally and I encouraged it to keep growing. So that purse lane was just a volunteer. Since it's growing here, I'm gonna clean all this other stuff out of here. Got a June berry, I'll leave that. Pull the, uh, if the carrots, I might leave them, but I'll take this uh, evening primrose volunteer out of here. Anyway, I'm gonna plant all these stems, which are now two days old. Looking kind of sorry, but we're gonna, I'm gonna plant all these in the dirt and they should sprout. Even though I've had them sitting around for two days, even outside in the sun. My wife put them out here. I had them in at least air conditioning and she moved them out here, out on the porch. So they've been getting cooked. 100 degrees yesterday. So I'm gonna put them all in this bed over there. Um, I've done other videos on lamb's quarter. So right here we have two of the most absolute superfoods on all the land. Purslane, lamb's quarter. Eat those two things regularly and you will be healthy. There's just so many nutrients between the two of them. A very rare uh, source of um, omega-3s that usually you can only get from animals. Very rare form in this plant and it's very well absorbed when coupled with the other Vitamin C, vitamin A in there, it's got calcium, manganese, magnesium, potassium. It has all kinds of micronutrients in that. And everything I mentioned, it's either, it's 15% or more of the RDA of all of those. And the, the beta carotene, alpha tocopherols or whatever, 30, I forget, but it's about seven times as much as in carrots. It's, and this is just a wonderful superfood. And there's folate in there, a lot of folate in that lamb's quarter point is you can uh, research the nutrition this stuff is just off the charts this is only like 15 calories per cup but then the the uh, nutrients in it is just it's one of the most nutrient dense foods that exist and if you grow it free of pesticides you know and you don't have any contaminants you're going to just do very well to eat that so anyway i'm going to just put these stems just under the dirt i'm going to clean this up throw the stems in there all through this whole area and uh, water it in and uh, see how it goes. It'll be another really hot day today, Virginia, mid-August, but our temperatures are going to be breaking. We're going to get some rain. So we'll just see if, um, and it should, I've done this before, but I did it with rooted uh, little pieces of stem. So I'm just going to throw these right in the dirt and we're going to see. Pretty sure it's basically an endless food supply if you do this so think about it because it's not a picky plant it'll grow in most soils it's not picky about moisture it's that drought resistant it'll take a flood it won't stay under water but it'll take very moist soil as long as it dries out it'll take anywhere from partial shade to full sun i think you should really consider growing and eating this plant most people are going to walk by and not even know what it is so it's a low profile plant you can just stick it out there if anybody's ever raiding your garden for whatever reason, end of the world, your nutrition still is gonna be laying there. And even if they pull all this out, it's, it's gonna come back. I would just like to have beds in beds of this. You can feed a lot of people, keep a lot of people healthy. So we're gonna see how it goes. I'll show you a finished product in a little while and then I'll do a follow up in a couple weeks to see how the purslane is looking. All right, thanks for listening, y'all. Anyway, they went dead on or shut off on me. So. I'm just, uh, I got this extra dirt from where I started. I just grab a handful of it, put it right on the. Make everybody dizzy here. Anyway, you get the idea. Ants are arguing with me over whose garden this is. So, also, I wanted to show you on the, the lamb's quarter. This is a pretty good size for it here. What you do. Just snap off these you want to keep it from going to seed anyway so you just snap off those tender tips and use them like spinach eat them raw it's 
saute them, whatever you're going to do. Put them in a smoothie. Super, super nutritious. Don't forget the last quarter and don't forget the parsley. So I got a little bit left. I'm going to get this in and water this in and call it a day. Start on a different project. So I'm out here working on that purslane. Over there I got that ready, that cold frame. And I'm gonna put carrots in that. I think that's a good use for a cold frame. Coming up on uh, mid-August, so you get a really nice post-frost outside at least. Get some really sweet carrots that way. Hopefully, I don't know about the timing, we'll see. So I'm gonna rough up this ground over where that uh, lance quarter is. I'm gonna rough that up, I'm gonna throw some um, bowl bills of hard neck garlic, music garlic. I'm just gonna toss them down, I'm gonna rake over it a little bit and then just let them sit. And we're gonna see if I can get some garlic in these little spaces in between that won't be covered in plastic. So there's some vetch, common vetch, good stuff. Brings nitrogen, it's a legume. And it's a volunteer here. But I'm gonna go ahead and yank it out. That way I can get this garlic in here. So I'm gonna do garlic and then I'm gonna overseed the sprouting Carrot seeds, that's the way to get your carrot seeds, buy the sprouting carrot seeds. You get a pound for like 20 bucks or whatever, I don't remember how much, but. And this gorilla seed, them, just toss them out there and whatever grows, grows. Forget all that difficult culturing. Seed is expensive, yes, but buy it in bulk. Save your time, that's the most valuable resource of all. So I'm gonna overseed, a little hummingbird, hey. These hummingbirds like the sunflowers for some reason. Hello, fella. Wonder what he's up to. Can't even see him on the camera screen, but he's up there somewhere. All right. See you later, buddy. Oh, he's coming close. Hey. Oh, watch him check out the sunflower. No. Oh, there's his buddy. They live, they live around here somewhere, and I see them all buzzing all around in those sunflowers. I don't know if they're feeding on them or what. Uh, giant mammoth Russian sunflower, Mongolian sunflower, whatever it is. Mongolian sunflowers, yeah. Man, those suckers are coming on strong. They face the morning sun. You'd think they would face more south or, or what have you, but anyway, I digress. So I'm going to oversee this with the sprouting carrot seed. And I'll, I will definitely cover this later, and I think it's worth it. I'm also going to put uh, pregnant onions in here, multiplier onions, perennial onions. They're kind of rare and expensive to get. So get you a few and start multiplying them out. They are an awesome cash crop. They are an awesome staple just to have growing. So their value is only going to go up if the times get hard. Those onions are going to be worth it definitely barterable and so forth just because they're a, a permanent type of onion. Now I do have a lot of Egyptian walking onions. They are easier to culture here. So dedicating this bed to pregnant onions and putting them under cover is I'm going to do it. It's worth it to me because I want more of them. I'll get it watered in and I'll just give you a, a brief update after I get all the work done. Pregnant onions. I'm going to put them on five inch or so spacing just gonna just push them right in the dirt like that all through this whole bed and I won't even cover them I'll just water them and let the, the water do it but maybe two pounds of pretty rare onions there's an Egyptian walking onion hiding in there so it's a different color but we'll throw it in there so anyway uh, here I am on my beds we roughed up the area between, that'll be outside. Now this is just right off the, you know, the scapes. You let the scapes go to seed, and that's what you have left is these garlic bull bills. So I'm just going to take them, and they're not like sorted. It's just kind of rough. So now I'm just going to. It's good. I got a whole container of this stuff. Whole, uh, like, five gallon tote full of these seeds. So we're just 
going to just gorilla seed him. Let's see if we get garlic out of it. All right. And I'm also put these down here the left. What do you left to do something else with? Now, in my typical fashion, here's my carrot. These are actually sprouting seeds. Sold this out of sprouting seeds, I believe. And Waltham 29 broccoli, scarlet Nantes carrot. And I'm going to just overseed these onion beds with that. And we'll just see what we get in that over there's purslane. So when that purslane has gone, we have carrots and broccoli behind it. So we shall see. And we have some pregnant onions left. So we'll put them somewhere else. 